Welcome to a tutorial on electronics and today uh, we're entering the section of the circuit theory and we'll be dealing with basically uh, one of the most important theorems in circuit theory that's the uh, Thevenin's theorem today. Okay, so there you go. That's Thevenin's theorem. So basically, uh, as the name says, uh, this theorem was uh, actually you know, compiled by uh, Charles Thevenin, okay, who was a French telegraph engineer and there we have it today and it's you know quite useful in simplifying complicated electrical networks okay so I'll first you know give you the uh, statement of this theorem over here so just kindly bear with me for a second please okay and there you go that's the statement of the Thevenin's theorem so it states that well any two terminal bilateral linear DC circuit can be replaced by an equivalent circuit consisting of a voltage source and a series resistor. So it might seem a little uh, complicated at first in order to you know understand the terms uh, you know uh, bilateral linear and whatever whatever so but apart from that it basically uh, what it means is that we can just you know simplify and uh, you know an electrical network uh, by means of only a voltage source and a series resistance okay so here if you all have come across you know uh, linear electrical uh, networks now by the term linear over here we mean that the electrical I mean uh, all the circuit elements that have used in the uh, circuit basically I mean in the electrical network that we're basically talking about okay would be uh, you know conducting some amount of current and would have a voltage drop occurring across them now this current and the voltage across them okay would be you know of uh, would basically you know vary in direct proportion with each other for example uh, if I'll just uh, show you a uh, linear network over here then it looks something like this okay so there's the diagram so this diagram basically shows us a linear DC network. So you can see here there is a voltage source, okay, which is of course a DC source, and here all the circuit elements apart from this uh, voltage source are all resistors, okay. And now we know that in case of resistors, the current and the voltage through it, okay, would basically uh, you know vary uh, directly with each other. So there is no nonlinear activity. Okay, so and here the term bilateral would mean that a network which would be, uh, you know, the same if we, uh, I mean, which would basically you know, appear the same if we'd view it from both sides. So if we would basically look at this network from this side as well as from, I mean, from the left as well as from the right, it'll appear the same. So that's basically, you know, a bilateral network. Okay, so in this uh, uh, network that I'm just you know uh, showing you over here basically so this would represent a linear uh, DC uh, bilateral network okay and here two terminal would obviously mean that uh, you know in every network we need an output voltage okay uh, from a, a particular network so let's say in this uh, network we'd obtain our output voltage from the terminal C right over here I mean from the node C and of course from the node B right over here so this is the uh, you know area okay from which we'd basically be obtaining our output voltage so that's VO so you see I mean you can see from this uh, diagram that the output voltage that we're obtaining from this network is actually the uh, voltage drop that is occurring across or rather that is supposed to occur across uh, that of R4 right over here so the resistance R4 over here serves as our load resistance, okay? So it's basically our load resistance or the device, okay, across which we are basically, you know, uh, taking the load. I mean, taking the output voltage. So here, um, R4 is our load resistance, okay? So there you go. So here, in this case, um, if we basically, you know, apply uh, Thevenin's theorem in order to, you know, uh, simplify the networks, th I mean, this uh, particular network over here, then we'd basically be following certain steps. Okay, now, uh, here, if we would basically, uh, you know, uh, try and simplify this network over here, then we'd be basically uh, simplifying this much part of the uh, you know the network over here okay since uh, the R4 serves as the uh, load resistance uh, like that what, what, what we ever uh, I mean we have assumed over here and the end product of uh, you know the simplifying this network would be uh, something like this okay 
yeah there you go so upon simplification of this electrical network we'll be obtaining an equivalent network okay based on Thevenin's theorem okay uh, that would look basically something like this okay so here we'd have a uh, Thevenin voltage source okay in series with the uh, Thevenin resistance all right so here uh, are the steps of you know basically uh, simplifying a network using Thevenin's theorem okay so step number one remove RL. Now RL would serve as the, I mean RL basically stands for the load resistance. So here in our network, okay, that you can see over here, basically got to remove uh, uh, the R4 resistor because this serves as our RL. Okay, so upon removal of this uh, resistor R4, our network would apply, I mean, appear as something like this. Okay, so there's the uh, picture of our network whenever, uh, I mean, when we've removed the resistance R4, which serves as our load resistance, RL. Okay, so here, as you can see, uh, we'd basically, as I said in the previous, uh, you know, uh, discussion, I mean, uh, the previous part of the discussion, that is, that we'd uh, obtain our output volt, I mean, output voltage, that's uh, VO, okay, across uh, that of the uh, load resistance, so that's R4. Okay, so here, uh, it, since uh, the load resistance, that's R4, is connected across the terminal C and B over here, so here we're going to basically obtain our, uh, you know, the open circuit voltage, okay, known as VOC across this terminal in this case. Okay, so keeping that in mind, here we'd have our step number two, which says find the VOC, that's the open circuit voltage, okay, across the open load terminals, and that's the required Thevenin voltage, okay. So if we'd obtain our uh, open circuit voltage over here, then obviously we'll need to apply, you know, basic rules of network analysis. Now here, since we uh, have this path disconnected, okay, and a voltage source Vs is present over here, then it's quite likely that a current from this voltage source would basically, uh, you know, move on through this loop only, okay? So here we'd have a current flowing from this voltage source, okay, uh, flowing across R1 and R3 only, and not entering R2 at all, because this path is open. And due to no current flowing through the resistance R2, uh, there would basically be no voltage drop occur occurring across uh, this resistance R2 over here. So the potential uh, drop at the uh, node A would be the same as that across node C. Okay, so if we had basically, uh, you know, treat it mathematically, then we'd obtain this particular, uh, you know, uh, I mean this particular um, voltage drop that it would occur across uh, the uh, terminals C and B over here would be the same as the voltage drop occurring across the uh, resistance R3, so that across A and B terminals. So it could be obtained mathematically as something like this. If we just try and find out the current flowing through the network, then it would basically be I equals Vs by R, sorry there, what resistance we have? Okay, so R1 and R3, R1 plus R3. Okay, so that's the uh, amount of total amount of current that should flow through this uh, loop only. Okay, and then we need to find the uh, voltage across that of R3. Okay, so in that case, we have the current, okay, and now uh, the output voltage would be the voltage drop across R3. So now the voltage drop across R3 is given by, so I'll, light, I'll just basically write it, write it down as you know, VR3, that's given as I into or rather I multiplied by R3 so that we'll basically get it as you know that's the uh, value of I over here if you just you know, substitute it right here then we can get uh, okay Vs by R1 plus R3 and this whole thing multiplied by the value of R3 okay so this is particularly uh, the voltage which we are basically asking for so therefore our open circuit voltage or rather uh, also, we can call it the uh, equivalent Thevenin's voltage is given by, you know, Vs R3 by R1 plus R3. Okay, so this particular uh, value of the uh, voltage drop that is occurring across that of R3 and hence across the uh, terminal C and B uh, would be our required open circuit voltage or the 
seven in this voltage that's represented by VTH. Okay, so now we'd move on to step number three over here. Okay, so point number three states that I mean, after we found out, uh, you know, the Thevenin's voltage and all, okay, it states that short all voltage sources and open all current sources. Okay, so we'll just search our network for all these, uh, you know, voltage sources and current sources. Okay, so let's get back to our network. Okay, so this is our network. Now here, uh, we only see a voltage source, Vs. We don't see any current sources. So as it says, we need to short all the voltage sources and open all the current sources. Okay, so we'll basically do that. Now as our network has only a voltage source, we need to just short it down. Okay, and it'll appear as something like this. So there you go. So upon shorting the voltage source, that's Vs right over here, upon just, you know, just short circuiting this uh, path, will basically obtain the network is something like this. Now you can see that the open terminal is basically uh, that across, I mean uh, that of the terminal C and B. Now we need to look at the network through this direction. And now looking through this direction we need to imagine that a current would basically enter the network through this particular direction and would basically exit in this way. So just imagine it this way, okay? No, actually no current is basically entering or leaving the circuit. We just need to imagine that, okay? So now if this current I would enter uh, this network through this, uh, uh, you know, the uh, terminal C, then it'll pass through R2, okay? And then at from the node of uh, A, okay, it'll basically divide into two paths one across, I mean one through R1 and the other through R3. So we'd have two branches of this current. So let's just call it I1 and I2. And then again, it'll unify and leave the terminal, uh, I mean leave this, uh, you know, network to terminal B. Uh, I mean, just it'll just basically add up with itself and just leave it, okay? So now we can see that uh, here the resistance R2, okay, is coming in series and R1 and R3 are parallel to each other. So here the uh, net resistance needs to be found. Okay. Now, so step number four over here states that find RTH, uh, that's the uh, equivalent Thevenin res resistance, okay, across uh, this open uh, terminal, I mean ac across the open load terminal, okay, in the resulting circuit of three, so this is uh, obviously the resulting circuit of three, looking through the open load terminals, okay. So as I said, or rather as I described a little earlier, that we need to look through this direction and all, and now we need to just calculate the equivalent resistance of this network. So the equivalent resistance of this network, okay, that's RTH, or rather the Thevenin resistance, would basically be uh, obtained as something like this. We'd have R2 in series with, uh, and uh, the R1 and R3 in parallel. Okay, so R2 plus R1 parallel to R3. So that gives us basically R2 plus R1, R3 divided by R1 plus R3. So there we go. So that's basically our required equivalent thevening resistance. Okay, and now at this term, I mean, uh, now at this uh, point, you know, the battle is almost won. Okay, and now we only got the last step over here, that's step number five, it states that connect RTH, that's the Thevenin resistance as obtained right over here, VTH, okay, that's the Thevenin voltage which we determined over here, or rather the also it's known as the open circuit voltage across the open load terminals. And now we just need to connect the RTH, VTH and RL, that's the resistance R4, in series to get the simplified network. And finally over here, we're basically going to get our simplified network in just a few moments. Okay, there it is. So you can see over here we've connected the uh, VTAs as it's having in resistance as we've obtained in, in the previous part of this discussion, which is of course Vs R3 by R1 plus R3. That's the uh, required voltage source, which we are, are going to be uh, 
containing over here according to the uh, theorem and here in series along with this source we have the RTA that's the Thevenin resistance as uh, the equivalent in a combination of R2, R1 and R3 that we obtained earlier and finally we have our load resistance R4 you know all of them connected in series so here this theorem that's the Thevenin theorem basically you know proves quite handy or rather is it's quite you know useful in basically uh, simplifying quite complicated networks and that's where uh, this theorem basically uh, has its importance okay so uh, with that we uh, come to the end of this tutorial discussion on the Thevenin's theorem hope you've enjoyed learning this theorem over here and let's just see you in the forthcoming tutorial so till then it's just gonna be a short goodbye and thanks for watching